Thank you, Mo. Give it up for Mo Rocker. I have my PhD advisor, Dr. Carolyn Myers, here tonight, and she's taking great joy in the fact that I had to put on these glasses. <laughs> also have with me tonight my beautiful wife, Tracy, <laughs> and my son, Miles Mackey, who's a sophomore at Howard University, majoring in guess what? I, I went to Morehouse, and in fact, he went to Howard. That's the only reason I'm claiming him tonight. <laughs> As you heard, I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana, the lower nine, where a lot of kids grow up thinking that the only path to success runs through the NBA. As a young man, that's certainly what I thought, but that wasn't my calling. I played ball in school and suffered a major shoulder separation that ended my basketball career before it got started. I like to say I shot like Stephen Curry and I had the leaps of jaw, but I did not. <laughs> Tom, I just had big dreams. That's when I had to come up with a plan B, which really was plan A, Ruben. And becoming an engineer intrigued me. Mind you, I didn't know exactly what it meant. I knew it sounded like cool work and I wanted to be one. When I was nine years old, my uncle bought me a little erector set and I made a car and Dr. Boyd and ran across the floor. And my uncle jumped up and said, that boy is gonna be an engineer. I didn't know what it was, I couldn't spell it, never met one. But everywhere I went and people asked me what I was gonna be, Mo, you know what I said? An engineer. Somehow I find my way to Morehouse College where they said it didn't matter that my SAT scores placed me in remedial reading and developmental mathematics only if I set my sights high. They let me in only on conditional terms that I take remedial reading. They say that when you're behind in a race of life, you got two choices, run faster or quit. The only problem in America is that 200 of our children are quitting. I got up every day and I ran and I ran and I ran. <laughs> I finished more else in three and a half years. Number one in mathematics, magnum cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Thank you. And when I came off that stage, they said, what you gonna do? I said, man, I'm going over there. And Oscar, two, and two weeks later, I started at a place called Georgia Tech that wouldn't even give me an application coming out of high school. And 18 months later, I finished my second undergraduate degree, a BS in mechanical engineering from Georgia Tech. Two years later, I got a master's in mechanical engineering from Georgia Tech. I got job offers from everywhere. I remember Chevron came down and gave me job offers in Bakersfield, California, Texas, El Paso, Beaumont, Texas. Mo Rocker, they brought me to my hometown of New Orleans, and they took me out and they put me on a helicopter and they flew me over the Gulf. They took me to an oil rig and they brought me back to the building. They took me back to the top. Time they gave me a big check and they said, we want you to be an engineer. I said, no, you don't understand. When I was 12 years old, I put doctor on my door. Now, I thought I was going to be Dr. J. <laughs> but it didn't turn out that way. And I went back to Georgia Tech. And in 1996, I became one of 11 African Americans in the country that year to receive a PhD in mechanical engineering. And I have my office made here tonight, Dr. Carolyn, I mean, Dr. Carmen Sidberry, who was either number 10 or number 12, but we finished together. But make no mistake about it, I didn't accomplish this alone. All the way I got support. There were people who said yes instead of no. There were people who believed in me when others didn't, gave me the hand I needed. My PhD advisor, Dr. Carolyn Myers, Dr. Myers, who's here tonight, told me yes and introduced me to a lab into ASME. She told me yes when everybody else told me no. And I am because of her. Dr. Myers, I love you. I'm forever grateful. As long as there's breath in my body, the world will know your name. I came here tonight to show you what's possible. There are a million little kids out there with greatness inside of them. All they need is someone to believe in them, to show them an example and point them in a direction and get out of their way. 
That's why I founded STEM NOLA, to expose and inspire and engage young people to the opportunities in science and technology and engineering and mathematics and, and inspire them to do this thing called engineering right in their own community. In the past 25 years or so, I've held a lot of titles, doctors, professors, founder, and CEO, but the title that means the most to me, the one I hold closest to my heart, is mentor. Because of mentoring, it's all about the promise of the future. There's another person in this room tonight who I know feels the same way, and that's the woman we are honoring tonight, my friend, Dr. Gwendolyn Boyd. All of the amazing things she has accomplished, all of the titles she has held, executive of this, president of that, I know <laughs> that which lifts her up and keeps her going is being a mentor to young people, girls and boys, with good hearts and good brains and big, big dreams and not a clue what to do with them. <laughs> She's what brought me all the way from New Orleans to be with you tonight for a chance to pay tribute to this amazing engineer, this great teacher, and above all, this very fine person. Because what's important to her isn't being the great Dr. Gwendolyn Boyd. No, what's important to her is opening the door for the next Dr. Boyd and all the ones that's after her. That's what she does, that's what I try to do, and that's what ASME Foundation is doing with all the wonderful programs that ignite and spark in young people. Open a door to an engineering education and career and nurture the idea of brilliant young innovators who will solve the world's most pressing intractable problems. Thank you for allowing me to spend some time with you. <laughs> 